Hello everyone and welcome to this solution keynote about hybrid edge and multi-cloud. I'm Alejandro Huertas, a senior cloud engineer at OpenEmla. So first of all, we are going to start by talking about how this uh, hybrid cloud expansion to the edge works. So first of all, uh, you can uh, deploy automatically any infrastructure using this uh, one provision fire edge uh, graphical user interface. So you can go there and uh, deploy any any infra in any cloud provider that we, we support. Then you have a uniform management of everything that is uh, work, uh, working at your Open Nebula instance. So with your Open Nebula, you can manage, of course, your on-premise infrastructure, but also the public resources that you have uh, deployed using this one provision firebase. And then you can run any application on top of this infrastructure that you have deployed. So you can run uh, VMs, you can run multi VM services, you can run micro VMs, you can run containers, or you can run Kubernetes cluster on top of it. So all the images are available in our public marketplace. So you can download it from there and just instantiate it in the new resources that you have uh, deployed. Now let's talk about, um, uh, about the supported providers that we have at Open Nebula. Uh, the providers that we have are Vermetal. Because of this, you can get the, the following benefits. So you are going to have uh, the best performance and highest capacity of, and as they are uh, physical servers. Uh, because of this, they are an easy extension of your on-premise uh, cluster. They are physical servers, so they are very similar to the ones that you can have in your on-premise infrastructure. Uh, same images and application can be deployed on, on, on them. So you don't need to make any change on the application that you already have. You just need to deploy them in the new um, infrastructure that you have deployed in the, in the public cloud providers and everything is going to work. And finally, it's a natural way of avoid uh, locking because you don't need to, you don't have any vendor locking. You can deploy uh, your application in any any remote provider. Uh, currently, the providers that Open Nebula support are AWS and Equinix. In both of them, we use the, the metal instances that they are, they are available. We okay, focus now on what's new on Archeon, which is the, the latest version of Open Nebula, the 6.4, which is an LTS version. Uh, we have focus in the, in the point that you can see below. So we have Elastic Provisions. This is a new functionality that will allow user to grow up an existing provision in order to add more compute capacity to it. So imagine that you have a provision with uh, two hosts and you want to deploy a new, uh, a new host to this provision. You can do it but by uh, uh, this new functionality and you don't need to create a new provision for this. So you can reuse the existing one. And we also have had the ability to add more IP addresses in case you need it to an existing uh, provision. Then we have this HCI cluster, which is a hyper covered infrastructure. This is a new type of architecture that can be deployed with one provision and it's going to use a theft based storage, which is an open source storage solution in order to store all the images and all the information from the virtual machines. Then we have made uh, many improvements in the one provision fire graphical user interface in order to improve the usability and the performance of, of it. Uh, as I said previously, we have only environmental providers now. So we have disabled by default the virtual providers that we have uh, at Open Nebula. Uh, in order to use these metal providers that are going to give you more uh, better performance, etc. So they, they have been disabled, but you can still uh, use them if you want. They can be enabled by just using a symbolic link to the folders that contains all the information and everything will keep working. And finally, we have made some bug fixing. So we have uh, fixed some bugs related with the provision management and the, and those kind of things. And they have all been fixed in this new, in this new release. Now let's start talking about the two architectures that we, we have with um, with one provision. So the first of the first of it is SSH storage based architecture. So basically here there are two types of uh, servers. We have the replica host, as you can see here in this host, we have this R here. 
So basically, this host is going to run the KVM, which is the hypervisor itself, and also it's going to work as a um, image cache. So basically, all the hosts can take the, the image from it uh, when they when they need it. And then we have hypervisor only nodes, so they basically run the, the KVM. So if we take a look at the diagram that we have on the left, you can see that we have two different views. We have the Open Nebula view and the AWS view. So if we check the Open Nebula view, we can see that we have the front end. So basically here we have Open Nebula installed. And in this front end, we have two kind of data stores, the image and the system. Basically the image is going to work as a image repository. So you are going to have all the images that you are going to use in your cloud. And the system is going to store all the information about the running virtual machine that you have in your, in your infrastructure. Then we have the replica host. So basically this, is the image cache. So when we instantiate a VM the first time, it's going to take a bit longer because we need to copy the information from the front end to the, to the host. But then uh, the second time we try to instantiate the same virtual machine, it's going to take uh, less because instead of copying the image from the front end to the host, we are going to take the image from the, from the replica host. Okay, So the time will be reduced a, a lot. And then each, each host has communication with other using VXLAN, VGP, and also they have a internet connectivity. Now, if we move on to the AWS view, we can see that uh, we can see all the resources that Terraform is going to deploy in, a, in AWS. So basically we have a single VPC that is going to contain all the resources that we have. Then we have some internet gateway to give internet access um, to the host and also to the VMs that are running on it. And then we have some root tables to do all the networking things that we need to perform. And finally, we have these metal instances, which are the, the hosts themselves that are going to be used to virtualize the, the, virtual, the virtual machines. Now, if we take a look at the Ceph storage AR architecture, as I said, this is a hyper-converged infrastructure that uh, behind the scenes use Ceph, which is an open source storage solution. So in this case, we have three different type of servers. We have the full nodes that is, and they are going to run the Ceph OSD uh, and the monitor demos, as well as the KVM. So in case you want to have the fault tolerance uh, cluster, you, you need at least uh, having a, a number three of these uh, nodes in order to, to work properly. Then we have the OSD nodes that basically run Ceph OSD monitor daemon and KVM. And finally, we have the hypervisor only nodes that we have uh, previously, which runs the KVM and the Ceph client tools that are basically used to interact with the, with the Ceph class. Now, if we take a look at the Open Nebula view, you can see that we have the front end again with the image and the system. But in this case, both of them are Ceph. So basically, instead of having the replica host, we have the image and the system in each of the hosts we have. So basically, this is the Ceph cluster. And when we are going to instantiate a VM and manage the VM, all the information is going to take from this a self cluster pool, okay? And then uh, all the communication between the, um, the nodes, again, is doing using VXLAN and they have internet connectivity. If we take a look at the AWS view, we can see that we have more or less the same resources as before, but now we have a specific uh, CIDR block that is used for safe. So all the safe communication will be done through this local network in, instead of uh, using the, the private networking that is used basically for the VNs. So the VNs can communicate uh, each, each other. And the rest is going to be the same. We have the same VPC, we have the same metal instances, root table, etc. okay? Finally, before the demo, if we, uh, we are going to take a look at the one provision file edge graphical user interface. So basically, this is a graphical user interface that allows all users to manage everything related with the, with the provisions. So this is the main dashboard where you can take a look at the resources that you have in your infra. So the number of provisions, the number of providers, and the physical resources that you have from them. And then you, can, you will be able to manage uh, the provision itself. So you are going to be able to deploy a new, a new provision you are going to be able to delete an existing provision and also configure an, an existing provision in case you need it, okay? So all the things that are uh, do with the provision are managed through this 
uh, one provision fire edge uh, graphical user interface. So now we are going to start with the with the demo. So first of all, I'm going to explain you uh, how it's going to be the demo, and then we are going to see the demo live, so you can see all the operation that need to be performed in order to have everything up and running. So we are going to start with uh, uh, Open Nebula installing our on on-premise uh, data center. So then using the, um, the one provision graphical user interface, as you, are, as you can see here, we are going to create uh, the provider. So in our case, we are going to use AWS and three different zones. So we are going to have one in the United States, this North California, and two in Europe, one in London and one in Frankfurt. So once we have the providers ready, we are going to provision the three edge cluster, okay? One in each location that we have previously defined, okay? They are going to be the same edge cluster, so they are going to follow the same architecture. Then we are going, uh, we are going to download an image from our marketplace, okay? So basically we are going to go to our, mar our public marketplace and we are going to download our WordPress, ap WordPress application so we can then instantiating the three different uh, three different clusters and finally we are going to deploy this application okay so they are going to be three different vms that are going to be run in the in the three zones and then using the public ip that they will have we are going to be able to connect to the wordpress that is running inside of them okay so this is going to be the final architecture as i said we are going to have a open nebula in our on-premise cluster, okay, this is our main data center. Then using this one provision Fire Edge uh, graphical user interface, we are going to deploy the three different edge cluster, one in North California, one in London, and one in Frankfurt. And then you are going to see that with the same application, we can deploy the three different locations. We just need to select the network that we want to use, and then Open Nebula is going to deploy the application in each uh, location automatically, okay? So we are ready to start with the with the demo. Okay, so this is the one provision graphical user interface main dashboard where you can see all the all the things you have running in your in your open nebula. So let's start by creating the providers we need. So this is blank. So we are going to start by creating the, the first one. This is going to be the, the Frankfurt one. Okay, so we select the Frankfurt template below. Okay, so we click on E. The next step, this is just general information about the provider. We are going to leave it, leave it as it is. And now we are going to put the AWS secret and key. So basically, they, this is information we need to connect with uh, AWS. So now we have the Frankfurt provider ready. And we are going to do the same with London and North California. Okay, So we select London. Again, we don't change anything here. And finally, we would put the access and the secret key. This is the same as, as before, okay? So we put the, the information and we click on finish. We have the two providers ready now. And let's create the, la the, the last one. So this is going to be North California. Again, don't touch anything here. And we put the same access and secret key, okay? So now we have uh, the three providers ready, as you can see here. Frankfurt, London, and North California. So it's time to create the provisions. In order to do that, we go to the provision uh, tab. And we are going to start with the with the Frankfurt one. So we first of all, select the edge cluster, which is the cluster we want to deploy. Now we select the provider, Frankfurt, in our case. Okay. Now we put some uh, information about the provision. So this is going to be the Frankfurt cluster. So we put the name here. And finally, we have some configure and uh, some user input. So these are basically going to configure the provision itself. So now we are going to leave it as it is because this is a key VM and metal. And the provision start uh, working. Okay, so now let's create the, the two provisions, the London and the North California. Again, this is going to be an edge cluster now using London. So we put the name uh, London here. And again, the user inputs, we can leave it as, the, as they are. And finally, we do the same with the North California. So edge cluster, North California now. So we put now the name North California here. And uh, finally, uh, when this is ready, uh, we can uh, leave the user inputs as they are. 
And now the three provisions have been deploying. As you can see, if you put your mouse in, on it, you can see that they are uh, deploying. Okay, so let's wait a few seconds until they are in running state. Now they are running. Okay, so uh, we are we are ready. You can see they are running. We, we are ready to go to Sandstone in order to check all the all the resources that has been has been created. So let's start by going to infrastructure. Then we are going to clusters. You can see that we have three different new clusters with all the resources that we have previously deployed. Now let's go to host. So you can see the three hosts that are running with in each zone of AWS. Okay. So now let's uh, download the image from the from the marketplace. Okay. So in order to do that, we are going to go to storage, then to apps. Okay. Uh, as you can see here, we have all the Open Nebula public marketplace application. So we select the service WordPress KBM. And then we click on the download button that is on the top bar. And we select the default data store. Okay, this is an image data store that is shared between all the clusters that we have at Open Nebula. So we click on the download button. You can see that um, we will have uh, the image and the template automatically created. Okay, so now if we go to image tab, we can see that we have the image that is being downloaded. And if we go to templates, you, you can see that we have this service WordPress uh, KVN template here ready to be to be instantiated. Okay, so let's see if the image is ready. Okay, now it's ready to be deployed. So we can start uh, deploy uh, deploying all the all the WordPress. Okay, so we go to VMs, we click on the uh, template we have, and we click on instantiate. This first one is going to be instantiated in the Frankfurt cluster. Okay, so we need to select the network that corresponds to this cluster. Okay, so basically we select Frankfurt here and we click on instantiate. Now we are going to do the same with the London one. So we go below and we select the network that corresponds to the London cluster. And finally, the, the one that uh, will be allocated in North California. Okay. So we select North California here. Okay, so now we have the three VMs uh, being deployed. If you check, they are in control of state, they are being deployed. Okay, so we need to wait a few seconds until they are in running a state. Okay, and we are we can be able to connect to them. Okay, so now uh, them they are in running, okay. So in order to connect to them, we need to click in the in the in the VM, okay. And you will see that we have an IP address in bold. So you just copy this address and open a new tab in the browser. Okay. And now you will see that we have the WordPress installation ready. So you can uh, continue with the default process of installing and configuring WordPress. We are going to do the same with the, the one that is in London. Okay. So we take the IP and we connect to it. You will see that uh, this is available. And now we are going to do the same with the North California one. Okay, we copy the IP, we open a new tab, and we connect to it. And as you can see, uh, the WordPress is uh, running here. Okay, so we have uh, checked that uh, all the VMs are accessible through the public IP address. Now it's time to delete the, the provisions. Okay, so in order to do that, we go to the one provision file in graphical user interface, we click on delete. And we are going to select clean up because we want to open Nebula to delete all the running VMs that we have in this edge cluster. Okay. Now we click on accept and we are going to do the same with the London and the North California cluster. Okay. So again, clean up, accept. And the latest one, we click clean up and accept. And now the three provisions are being deleting. Okay. So if we wait a, a few seconds, they are going to be completely deleted, as you can see here. And now if we go back to Sandstone in order to check the resources, we are going to see that we don't have any VM running on it. And if we check the clusters, you will see that we don't have any cluster now. And the same with the host. You can see that the host uh, has been deleted. Okay. So this has been the demo. You can see that how easy it is to deploy the three different clusters and then uh, uh, continue with the with the deployment of the, of the applications. Okay. Now I would like to uh, yeah, give a special thanks to the sponsor of this uh, Open Nebula conference. So they are Limbit and uh, Storepool. Okay. And I would also like to give some 
acknowledge to the different foundation that uh, works with uh, with Open Nebula, okay, as you can see below, and also to the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program, which was the one that Open Nebula had in order to do all the edge innovation that we have performed in the in the latest release. Okay, uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, released the Open Nebula 6.4 Archeons, which is an LTF release. Okay. So with this QR code, you can go to the download page in order to test all the new functionality that we have at, uh, at OpenNebula, okay? So this has been everything. I would like to give you, thank you very much for listening and attending to this uh, keynote and see you.